The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Broadcasting live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage in Salem, New Hampshire, USA. And broadcasting around the world, this is the Cigar Authority. Transmitting since 2010, the Cigar Authority is the longest-lasting cigar podcast ever. Grab a cigar and light them up, light them up, light them up. This is the Cigar Authority. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. April 17, 2021, live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage. Today, let's get small with Cigarillo's cigars. Are they even premium cigars? Josh Hadbersky is the new guy on the Premium Cigar Association's Government Affairs. It's been a couple of years, but he's the young gun. We're going to see what's going on politically for or against cigars. You might not like this, but you need to hear it. Stick around, everybody. Welcome to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, now in its 12th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. So I feel bad about the little cigars we have for Josh coming today, but this is what, what was lined up. And yeah. for the people that are in the care package, uh, you got this little teeny cigar, but you got two. You got two. You Still got, got a little feedback about it. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feedback. You got, you got two for almost the price of one. Right, right. So yeah. it's part of it. So what's the first cigar, Barry, we well, want to smoke? Today's first cigar is the United Pencil Maduro, and it's manufactured in Dominican Republic for United Cigars. The size is a 6x28, and it features a Medora wrapper over binder and fillers from the Dominican Republic. It is part of the Cigar Authority care package, and a single will set you back $1.79, while a box of 100 is $152.99, which comes out to just $1.52 per cigar. It just saves the $27 or 15% off the box price on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-water retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. What is it with people complaining about the cigars they get in the care package? Because it, it's an unbelievable deal if you look at it for the entire year. And sometimes we do experiments uh, like smoking this ridiculous thing. And I'm not saying that the cigar in there is going to set your world on fire every single time. But there's a reason why it's there. And you should smoke it along with us and learn with us. Well, I told people Dave lost his shirt giving away the Atabe a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <There> so. <we laughs> go. Yes, I did. So you win some and you lose some. Modeled after the number two pencil, and this is not a number two pencil. If you say, wow, this is a, looks a little thinner, no number two on this. But it's modeled after what, the what, number two. What pencil. number is that pencil? It doesn't have a number on it, so I don't know. But this it's is some cheap generic, version. Yeah, it's the Must g- be generic a, pencil. A number one or something. Yeah, yeah. Which the number two we know is, <laughs> is the one. But I remember bringing it to a cigar factory many years ago, and I said, "I want a cigar this big." I was I was here. We were doing the show. The cigar hasn't been around that long, okay. and you pitched the idea on the show. And I was new to cigars, and I'm like, "Yeah, that sounds like a great idea." And then we get off the show, and your staff at the time hated it. Yeah. It's the stupidest idea I've ever seen. Uh, they happen to sell by the tens of thousands yes, every year. we sell a ton of them. And they're, they're an add-on cigar, much like a Toscano is, that somebody buys their regular cigars and throws a few Toscanos in, and they buy the handful of cigars, and they throw some of these in. I'm not hopeful this is going to last for the entire segment, and I hope you don't mind, but we have uh, Terrence Riley coming up. And so I grabbed one of his cigars as, as, your backup. as my backup in case I run out of cigar. Yeah, this is not an hour-long cigar, but these are nice no. to have with you. you. You sell a fair number of boxes, too. And in the box of 100. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we sell them by the box, too. Yes, we do. Um, and the uh, magic of this cigar is it's ready to go, but we have a uh, sponsor, so we have to get to it anyway. It's time to cut... Our cigar, the official cutting, is brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality. 
tradition in excellence. Now, Excellent. Barry, I think with a cigar that thin, it makes you look like you've only lost 90 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so ready to go. You don't have to cut it. It's already cut. So you, you do get the full six inches. You don't have to cut it away. Or anything like that. Jonathan likes getting the full six inches. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> this is this is the Maduro version of the United Pencil. There is a natural version of it, uh, just a little lighter. It's the same tobacco. The lighter wrappers become the natural. The darker wrappers become the Maduro, much like you see on Padron. Mm. It's the same exact tobacco. Uh, but this is a Dominican-made cigar. And it is a long-filled, handmade cigarillo. And uh, I would say that this is the uh, tobacco on the outside that would formally be referred to as binder. It's a little rough looking. <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. The cold door, though, tastes like a, a sugar cookie. I mean, yeah, I got the dough and a little sweetness to it. Yeah, maybe it's a little undercooked. I'll give that to you. Undercooked sugar cookie. Th these can sort of make a Toscano look pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's prettier than the And Toscano. I don't smoke these in the car because I'm always worried I'm going to get pulled over for, you know, smoking the ganja. Yeah. We're going to light our cigar today with the Landshark by Lotus. The Landshark by Lotus is a uh, co-branded lighter. This is a Lotus lighter with a flip top. Three jets, double wall protection, so the outside doesn't heat up. Easy adjustment wheel, and it has the Landshark uh, logo right on the front of it for $19.99. Part of the Margaritaville collection. That is correct. And this, is, uh, this does have the patented vertical big-ass tank, as you can see. The entire lighter It's extra is large. Wasted away in Margaritaville. Who's the singer? Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Buffett, that's what it is. And he Call must, yourself a DJ. You think he gets a piece of the action? Oh, he does. Oh, yeah? Out. Yeah? It's all licensed by him, so. Well, he's not getting the, much because it's cheap. <laughs> Dave, you're old too, right? Yeah, yeah. So you remember Landshark from Saturday Night Live? Yes. The Landshark had come. Candy yeah. Graham. Candy Graham. <laughs> Candy Graham. <laughs> um, all right, so we're talking about cigarillos as, uh, or cigars, how they're defined. And this is going to really connect uh, as we go into the next segment and we bring Josh up to um, um, really tell us what's going on. But the first ever U.S. premium cigar definition that happened happened right here in New Hampshire where premium cigars were defined different than all cigars. And that was a big battle that went on because they tried to group premium cigars in with, at the time, it was the flavored blunts that were happening, and the, and the state was going after it and had a big problem with it and said, yeah, we got to stop kids from buying these blunts and stuff, and we're going to end up taxing cigars just to try to stop this. And I said, well, this is different than the show and tell that I brought and showed them what premium cigars were all about. So then it got to, okay... Before we go we, further, yep. I'm sorry. When you say other cigars, now this is separating... Premium cigars from other cigars, not OTP, which is other tobacco Correct. products. This, this is a separation within the overall umbrella of cigars. You have some that are premium and some that are non-premium. That's what you're talking about. It, as luck would have it, in New Hampshire, there was a tax on tobacco products except cigars. Right. So now they looked at this and said, nope, we want to tax cigars now because um, these Congress people were going to get filling up their gas tank, going in the gas station, and they'd see kids getting these great blunts and things like that, and said, the kids are smoking cigars. And I said, they're not smoking cigars. This is what's happening. And let me show you. And I empty it out, and I say, this is what's happening. So They're putting the weeds in it. Yeah. And that this can't happen with these other cigars. And let me show you why. And here they see um, the tobacco that's in it, and it, it, there's no way it's going to fall out. Right. So the definition turns to, in New Hampshire, premium cigar means any tobacco product made from tobacco, which, four criteria: A, is made entirely by hand of all natural leaf tobacco. All right. Now, what about hand-applied wrapper? Would that fall under the... Is hand-constructed and hand-wrapped. Okay, so you're... Anything having to do with a machine is out. And then we got a little into that, um, you know, when they do the bunching machine, what yep. do they call that? Uh, uh, Lieberman Press. Lieberman Press or something, that that's assisted, but it's still hand, 
hand There's done. a person that has to move yeah. that. It's a piece of leather. It's not. Right. Uh, weighs more than three pounds per thousand. So we got a little into that last week of what a cigar weighs, but three pounds per thousand. Doesn't a cigar weigh the same as a dime? Isn't that what you said? No. <laughs> no. Just checking. I gave my and point stories confused. Here was, here was the other thing. It's kept in a humidor. Because they saw them that they were packs of cigars that were just on the counter at the convenience store. And then when they came into our store, they saw everything had to be kept in a humidor to stay fresh. Right. Theirs was not that it stayed fresh, that it had something added to it that would keep a it conditioner. so that, yep. that that outside wrapper would stay pliable. So when you dump it out, you could still use that leaf for um, marijuana, which is what it was about. Hmm. So those are the criterias uh, in New Hampshire as it sits. So somebody could walk in and say, okay, you have the Perdomo gift packs. Those do not need to be in a humidor. But the Probably. real argument is that that pack itself is a humidor. Right. It does, it's not a wooden humidor, but it is a humidified pack. Yes. There's nothing added to those cigars. They're the same exact ones that are in the case. Let me tell you, at the beginning, and I remember one of the first people to come out with those packs was General Cigar. And there was a problem because... They were not, the convenience store didn't have a humidor, and then the, but the, it ended up staying, so I think it was never taxed. In this state, on non-premium cigars, is a 64% tax in the state of New Hampshire. Zero on a premium cigar. Right. So people started figuring things out and trying to get their um, little premium cigar that weighed under three pounds per thousand, over three pounds per thousand, to try to get it. And then as it as it So would, you could add clay, for example. Well you could add clay as a as a filter, but now you go, you fall out of one of the other criteria because it's not hundred percent right. tobacco. I heard that one company added kitty litter to hmm. their uh, cigars to try to do it. And again this wasn't a premium cigar anyway, but you know what kitty litter is made out of? No. Clay. I just said that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. So now let's uh, go into the U.S. the U.S. definition as it is right now. August 19, 2020, the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia issues a ruling in part of uh, to prohibit FDA's force of the Tobacco Control Act premium authorization requirements for premium cigars. Um, they do away with the enforcement of the FDA Compliance right now um, of the September 9th deadline went away, but at the same time, for purposes of court orders, a premium cigar is defined as, and this is nationally, a cigar that meets the following eight criteria. So not four like I had, now we have eight. And this is what it's ends up happening. It's complicated. Worse. Is wrapped in whole tobacco leaf. All right. So we're good. Yep, I got no problem there. Contains... A 100% tobacco binder. Now, this came from, you know, the paper binders that it is, yeah. which there's a word for that. Homogenized, homogenized tobacco yeah. paper. No homogenized binder of the tobacco. It has to now, be. Now, with, with the homogenization, uh, homogenization which of is the tobacco, binder, it's which is tobacco powder, correct. and it has a little bit of the fruit pectin that they're using to seal the cap anyway. Yeah. The, the ingredients of that, I personally wouldn't have a problem with. They do. Okay. Um, contains at least 50% of the filler by weight, long filler tobacco. Now we get a little little break here because we're saying long filled in New Hampshire, and now they're saying 50%. But one of the arguments was as they took the tobacco cigar apart, they would notice little pieces of tobacco was in there. Because when the guy's making the cigars, you know, they tear yep, they and they it. apply there. So no long filled cigar is really 100% long filled the tear that ends up happening and put those ends so you're not in wasting, place yeah. and put it in placements for flavor, right, Correct. as it happens. So somebody, which was great, ends up explaining that to them and says, you know, there needs to be some of this, but we don't want this chopped up cigarette thing. We don't want this to be, especially something that looks like this, get away with a cigarette. Right. And, and that's what the worry was that was happening there. So contains at least 50% of the filler by weight, long filler tobacco, leaves that run the length of the cigar. So a Cuban sandwich, which is a 50% short fill, 50% long fill cigar, is a premium cigar, I would guess, right? As it should be, yeah. Um, but most cigarellos, a short shot filled, the things that are in the tins and right. things like that, becomes a problem. 
Well, and, and a lot of them are machine made. Right. Is handmade or hand rolled, which means no machinery is used as part from simple tools such as scissors to cut the tobacco leaf prior to rolling. So it's not that it's gone through a machine, every piece is chopped up into a certain, um, which is what, what ends up happening to cigarettes and in non premium cigars. They're actually, you don't want little pieces, teeny pieces, but you they want. They fresh them and then they, they right. filter them. Um, has no filter. So again, this is somebody saying this brown paper with a filtered, it's a cigarette, but instead of being white, it's brown. And we'll call it a cigar, a little cigar. And there was lots of that that was going on. They didn't want any little tricks like that happening. Um, no tobacco tip. So the tipperillos and right. the different things that came out like that. Or non-tobacco mouthpiece. There was wood, plastic, and it's not, not tobacco. So a chisel, which is a mouthpiece, is made of all tobacco. And so, that's okay. Yep, that would work. Um, does not have a characteristic flavor other than tobacco. Now, this is where it gets weird because here on the Cigar Authority, right now we're having cookies, right? Yeah, the people are always telling me that I'm going to, you know, bloggers, I'm going to be the downfall of the cigar industry because I write that the cigar has notes of chocolate. Right. Now am I giving it a defining taste? And will they use that against the cigar Correct. industry? Correct. So I used to hear from a lot of people, you need to stop what you're doing. I haven't. <laughs> well, maybe the menu, you know, we've sat with manufacturers before, and we say these crazy flavors. Mm. Yeah, there's chocolate, there's cocoa mm. puffs here, and they, they laugh at us, and they say nothing. Yeah, it tastes like tobacco. Maybe they're covering their own ass, basically. I wouldn't put it past Skip Martin it. for covering his own ass. Yeah? Somebody he's the, has he's the worst one. He absolutely will not acknowledge that there's any flavor to the tobacco. Well, this one tastes like this tobacco. This tastes like that tobacco. It has a manbacco flavor. Right. That's okay because that's not defining manbacco. No. That's okay. It's not that's in the generic. Webster's Dictionary. Um, Pam, why don't you add that to uh, the Wikipedia's or whatever. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven is contains only tobacco, water, vegetable gum, with no other ingredients or additives. Yeah. I got no... Well, no problem there. So you can't add vanilla flavoring? Now, here, all right. If you're not actually applying the flavoring to the tobacco, which is a lot of people, uh, if you are able to make that happen by something being in close proximity, is it, does it lose its premium cigar status? I would say no. So barrel aging. Yep. It was in a whiskey barrel, that, something that used to be a whiskey barrel. You put it in there, and now when it stops absorbing those aromas, is it now a characteristic flavor, although you taste it? But you're not adding anything to the tobacco. It's doing it to itself through osmosis. But you put it in that environment. Hmm. But it, it's an argument. I would say no. I mean, it, I say no at, because at some point, at some point, they're going to say this is like the argument you make to your mom when you say, you know, my brother was hitting himself. No, you were holding his hand and hitting him with his hand. Yeah. So yeah, you you put the tobacco in close proximity to a flavoring agent, therefore you flavor the tobacco is, is probably where like they're going. Like a picture Sammy B did that to you as a kid a lot. <laughs> so when they when they I have no comment when they're adding making a pallone and they put water on the pallone wetting the leaves before they put it on there, sometimes there's something in the water, and it could be citrus, mm. it could be wine, yeah. it could be something that's going to start the fermentation faster and ends up eventually not having the taste, doesn't taste like wine, it may start tasting like pepper. Well, what about fire curing? Yeah, you're burning, you're burning wood inside the... But you're not adding that to the tobacco. The tobacco no, is in close proximity to it. I think you've got to split that hair out. Good. I think they've got to allow that. And weighs more than six pounds per thousand. Not three pounds per thousand. Six pounds per thousand. So this is what I hate about what the government does. With you, or without you give packaging. Them an inch without. You give them an inch and then they go, okay, it's three pounds per thousand. It's six pounds per thousand. What's next? Nine? Twelve? Fifteen? Yeah. See, we can all count by threes. Yeah, we can. We're, we're good with math. Is that what you were doing just now? Yeah. 
where when you look at something like a Cigarillo, and let's take the most popular, I would say, Cigarillo that's out there is a Macanudo Ascot. You all know that white tin with yeah. 10, 10 little Ascots mm-hmm. inside of it. We're talking about a three pounds per thousand product. Mm-hmm. And now six pounds per thousand becomes a problem. Okay. So we, we have it here. We're, we, it, on this cigar, we have more than six pounds per thousand, so we're okay. But then when we get to the second cigar, we may have an issue. And who's weighing them? And, right. how do, and how does the <laughs> consumer know it? How does the retailer know it? And where does the taxation fall or the problem yeah, fall? Yeah, I would imagine that it has to happen. That conversation has to happen when you're importing the product. So is this a premium cigar? Uh, tastes like a premium cigar. Meets, but according to these definitions. It tastes like, a, it tastes like a quick definition. hitter version of United. Mm-hmm. It meets the definition. It does. It does. It doesn't necessarily meet the mindset. Yeah, you're not saying, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm smoking premium cigars today, and then you'd light this up. You don't feel like... No. I feel very right. dainty. This is comfortable in my hand. I mean, I, <laughs> if any of these dudes in the audience want to dance, I'm ready. You are. You're always ready. <laughs> when was the last time you danced with a guy? Pre-COVID? It's, it's over a year. It's over a year. Oh, it boy. is over a year. As long as you've gone without dancing with another it's man. It's absolutely the longest, <laughs> for sure. So talk about the weight again to bring you back up to a premium cigar. A large con- cigar contains six pounds per thousand or up, or six to 20 grams of cigars. Of tobacco. Of tobacco. Of tobacco. Small cigars contain about three grams of tobacco. Small cigars are not therefore classified as a premium cigar nationally. Paper clips is how you would measure that. A paper clip is roughly one gram. Is so that true? Six, six paper clips would be the weight of that cigar. Hmm. Is that true? Yeah. So you have coin stories? I got yeah. paper clip <laughs> stories <laughs> for days, kid. All right. <laughs> a small cigar, three and a half inches by 28, is three grams. Less than a premium cigar of six pounds per thousand. Now, three grams to 5.9 grams are classified as non premium cigars. Uh, now, most states say a premium cigar needs to be six pounds per thousand to be categorized. 453 grams to a pound times six is 2,718 grams divided by a thousand cigars is 4.5 grams per cigar. Still not meeting the six pounds per thousand. It's four and a half paper clips. Right. You got to be at six paper clips. Cigarellos that are four and a quarter by 32 weigh just three grams, not 4.5. So the Corona, five and a half by 42, weighs nine grams. No problem with a Corona. Half Corona, probably fine. This is where they're trying to go. So they're saying a Cigarello as we. See it, not this. This is too big to be a cigarillo, but a little cigarillo is not a premium cigar. So there's, there must be people with... Uh, Let's even take a Davidoff. Right. Would you say a Davidoff cigarillo is a premium cigar? Based on the price, it feels like it, but <laughs> yeah. based on the feel, no. Well, you got to take... And you, based on the weight, you no. You have to take the price out of it. So price shouldn't have a problem. There's certain ones weight. that we carry... And the certain ones they don't make us carry because they know we have that issue. The ones that are in the cardboard boxes problem is too, way too little. And Davidoff, being a Davidoff dealer, you must carry every single Davidoff product. Except we don't have to carry those because it doesn't meet the criteria. And I always wondered why we didn't have the yes. demi task, but now We're, I know. Right, now I know. Mm. So you learn something here I on the show. Learn something. See what happens. So you'll be able to answer somebody that calls up and says, "Why don't you end up carrying them?" Because I'd have to charge a sixty-two percent tax on that. Right. And then when New Hampshire did theirs, you you lost a fair amount of inventory at that time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Some I, big I, sellers. Yeah. When when they made that that thing, we lost a lot. That was a uh, it was a million dollar about- move. That was triple Madero Dave that day. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> triple Madero. Yeah, that was bad. And what did they get out of it? I don't think they got anything out of it. I asked the state all the time, how much did you collect on non-premium cigars this year? We don't have that number. I said, I ask you every single year, and you never have that number. I think that number is damn less, close to zero. less than you than it costs you to collect the money. And all you're doing is end up hurting the business. It's actually cheaper to go... Online or to another right. state. And not to mention, in New Hampshire anyway, it's the highest business profits tax in the whole union. Mm. Yeah. Let us make the money so you can <laughs> get the tax on the other side. 
It's double taxation otherwise. Mm. So now if it moves from, you said, three pounds in New Hampshire to, to six, six pounds, you have probably less inventory in that range, right? Yeah, there's hardly anything there anyway. Yeah. But, but I'm, we're going to lose on our number, the second cigar we're going to smoke today. Right. We're going to lose and that. And that's big numbers. That's big numbers for us. Yeah. And what are they, what are they going to get out of it? It's a lose-lose situation. They're going to get right. nothing, and I'm going to get nothing too. So what's, what's going on here? And the consumer, that's not, a consume, that's not a consumer that's a cigar geek. That's a guy who smokes a lot of cigars in a short amount of time. He's losing. It's the budget-conscious customer. Yeah, or time consuming. Yeah, it's more. It's yeah. more. It's more time because they, they'll try a different cigar. So a lot of people that are working job sites and just don't. They take a break. Yeah, and fifteen don't minute have break. A lot of time. I think yeah. what you're going to see if if you're looking at a crystal ball and you say what a cigar manufacturer is going to stop making cigars that weigh six pounds per thousand exactly. <laughs> That's the new because it's going to be yeah. yeah. Will it be longer or thicker? You know where are they going to go with it? Thicker. Here's the longer one. Mm-hmm. Here's the answer to that. The pencil that everybody laughed at. I think they go thicker. Yeah. Yeah? Because you still you still have the issue of your, in quotes, long fill problem, 50%. Right. But you can, with a half Corona, if you make it thicker, so it weighs the right amount. Small leaves. You can put smaller leaves in there and still hit your 50% threshold. There we go. And thicker would be more enticing to today's cigar consumer. But not to the Cigarello guy. No. no. He likes this. Do you like Cigarellos? You like small cigars, but not that small. There's not much to it. I mean, it's hard to get much of anything into a blend. I mean, what there is tastes good, but you're not going to have any complexity. It does have the base note. There's a lot of wrapper. It's got the base note of a United cigar, but it doesn't have the complexity Right after the fact. I find it chocolate and earth. Strong. What? Oh, no. I do. It's strong. We don't have we don't have that kind of time. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's strong. It's maybe a little bit rougher around the edges compared to a normal you, size cigar. But of a no, I don't know. Let's put a United cigar against this, and I say base notes. It tastes like the wrapper. It tastes yeah. like it doesn't look as good as the wrapper on it, but it tastes like that wrapper. But it, it's all that. Yeah, it's one dimensional. It's one dimensional. You really got to feel at this point for the manufacturer if all of this, all of this is going to do is make it so that they can't be a good chef and use up all the ingredients that they have left over at the end. So regular cigars are going to become more expensive because absolutely the, true. the chop is something that they are able to recoup some of their cost absolutely. on to keep the other cigars lower in price. A big meat house has to make hot dogs and sausages, right? Absolutely. Or else what? The price of the of the sirloin or else you goes You wouldn't up. be able to have sausage, peppers, and onions. Also, you wouldn't be able to have that. But right. you'd also the, your price of your fillet would go up because you don't make hot dogs, chicken wings, all these things. Speaking of fillets, yes. Speaking of fillets, uh, you made it. One hundred three point seven as of this morning. One hundred three point seven. There used to be a radio station <laughs> there in Boston. One hundred three point seven. What was that? Oldies. One hundred three. Yeah. One hundred three point seven. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I'm looking Barry forward Wasser, to it. Uh, I owe him a, a big steak dinner. I'm looking forward to it. Wednesday, right? Yep. We're going to go to our buddy uh, Chuck Cicero so, over at uh, Buckley Steakhouse. Yeah. This is uh, going to be a mandate. All four of us going? It's, I like to call it we're celebrating Barry's uh, loss of 103.7. <laughs> and if you gain weight between then and now, I'm you can't go. It, it's off. <laughs> it's off. <laughs> it's off. And on a system is fine, but don't. Gain three point three point seven. I want to know what we're going to do for the next hundred. Uh, we'll do something. I promise. <laughs> hey, we've got a little time. Yeah. It's not going to be that the one's going to come off slow. Yeah, it's starting to slow down already, but it's normal. But you <laughs> lost over four pounds since last week. Yes, that's fast. Yeah, the wife's not home. I'm doing zero carb. I mean, I've had zero carbs every day this week. A lot of floppy bacon. By yeah, a lot of floppy it. bacon. Yeah, which is gross to me, man. <laughs> Why is, floppy? Why not crispy? Nah, I like bacon tartare. Just a little bit crispy on the edge, but super soft in the middle. Ooh. It's disgusting. It is. It's, it's like disgusting. chewing bacon-flavored bubble gum. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> All right. Let's take a break, and when we come back, Josh is going to join us. He's in the Premium Cigar Association Government Affairs. And um, you're sick of politics? I am, but we need to hear this. So let's hear what's going on with the PCA 
and uh, what's happening uh, in your area with cigars is do we have some good news, bad news? We'll, we'll talk about all of it. We're live in the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. To some, tradition is a catchphrase. To us, it's a guiding light. For there can be no great future without reverence for the past. Hammer and Sickle Tradition Series cigars are handmade, employing only time-honored methods. Meticulously crafted of individually selected tobaccos, Tradition Siri is a blend of three-year-aged Dominican Viso and Lijero, all finished inside a breathtaking five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. Tradition Siri from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua, the Nicaraguan expression of America's beloved brand Reserva Real. Reserva Real Nicaragua is a Nicaraguan puro, meticulously blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. The Reserva Real Nicaragua will take Romeo lovers and Romeo novices alike on a journey through premium Nicaraguan tobaccos. Reserva Real Nicaragua. It'll steal your heart again. Surgeon General warning, cigar smoking can cause cancers of the mouth and throat even if you do not inhale. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm -hmm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Christoph cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Christoph is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10-count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar-making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. This is Rafael Nodal from A Room Cigars and Tabacalera USA. You're listening to the Cigar Authority of the United Podcast Network. And we're back. We're smoking the United Pencil Maduro and getting ready to talk politics for just a little bit. So don't be changing the channel or whatever you do because you don't want to hear the politics. Don't be switching just off the YouTube. Stick around. Stick around. And you got to listen to this. With us is Josh 
Habersky. He's the head of the Federal Affairs for the Premium Cigar Association. Is that the correct title? I think so. I head of government affairs now. So government we're, affairs. Doing a little bit of everything. All right. So I got to know Josh a little bit before the show started. Uh, he has a, uh, you know, started in um, lobbying and government affairs and all that stuff and ends up in the cigar industry. I'm like, I'm figuring something went terribly wrong or something, but it, it turns out that he loves it. He, he's got his two passions together, politics and the cigar industry, and they do go hand in hand. So uh, I think you're in the right place at the right time. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, you've been there two years now? Two years. All enjoying right. every minute of it. Got the dream job, fighting the fight, enjoying the, you know, I, I was saying I'm a consumer first. So, you know, learning all the things, meeting the people, it's truly been a blessing the two years despite all the challenges that yeah. we face and there was plenty what a t tough time to get in with everything that was going on with pca on top of it so first how's things going with pca going well we are definitely bouncing back it's a better year already excited for you know july and the trade show which i'm sure we'll talk a little bit about but uh, we've been racking up wins in the states you know reopening in michigan was was big we're fighting to preserve the cap there uh, several things on the state level, federal level. Now we're shifting in. New bills are being introduced. You know, last year was a monumental year for us. You know, two court victories. Yes. And, um, you know, we're working on a third lawsuit right now with the Food and Drug Administration and really asserting what you guys were talking about in the beginning is a segment, you know, codifying and solidifying a definition of a premium cigar that protects it, you know, all the stuff on your shelves or at least the vast majority right. of things on your shelves. Yeah. How much protection do will the user fees that they've already imposed afford us? Because now they're making money because with the shutdowns of the entire government uh, across the country, rather, people ran out of stuff to do. All they could do was smoke cigars. They turned their homes into Shangri-Las, added smoking lounges in their house. The consumption is is at 90s level right now. Yeah. And that means that with the imports coming in, the government's actually making money on this. Does that afford us any protection? So we're actually asking the, you know, working through our congressional allies to get oversight of what the FDA is doing with these user fee funds. They're supposed to file a yearly report to Congress, and they haven't been doing that for, for a while. So, you know, we, we want to see the data. We want to see the information. And that oversight function is incredibly helpful for us. So we know what they're prioritizing. Um, you know, we've met with the FDA several times had stakeholders in last year you know before covid struck those first two months we were at the executive office building in the white house you know six eight times talking about the definition of a premium cigar which you know the one you mentioned with the food and drug administration is endorsed by cigar rights of america the premium cigar association because it protects the vast majority of products very interesting. So what exactly is your role? What do you do? And the PCA, um, we're, we're talking uh, in the office before the show started. I know a lot of our listeners, uh, whether they be retailers themselves or just consumers, look at the PCA as a trade show. But I applaud you to understand that that's not the idea of what the PCA has a trade show. Isn't that nice that they do that? and charge nothing for it for the, the, uh, the shop owner, but you're a member of, it's a protection for the cigar industry. Yeah, so my role is to serve as the chief government affairs officer uh, for the association, you know, work with our team to defend against taxation, against, you know, crazy things that pop up here and there. You know, in New Jersey, they wanted to require everybody to sell Nicorette patches and cessation products, make that a requirement for all retailers yeah. and explaining the nuances of it. Like that's going to have no effect other than harming the small business owner to have a new requirement to sell something. A Nicorette patch, you know, people aren't addicted to premium. Correct. And, they, and when you're talking to somebody in the government, you have to explain to them that this is not an addictive product. Unfortunately, as a retailer, it is not addictive because our business cuts in half in the wintertime because nobody's addictive to that product. But cigarettes, that doesn't happen. The, the, the numbers stay the same because they actually need that product. So uh, there's just so much, I, I know, dealing with states that, uh, like I have, the ignorance of our product 
is the biggest problem that the government doesn't understand. So is your day wrapped around trying to teach them? Yeah, education. I mean, my first year on the job, we did 350 congressional meetings. You wouldn't believe how many people think that cigars are just big cigarettes. Yeah. And like going and educating staff, you know, from the most progressive offices to the conservative offices, anything in between, explaining the usage patterns. Um, you know, the data's on our side. We, you know, the PATH study, which is one that's routinely cited in all of our, um, you know, collateral, you know, the average person has their first premium cigar at the age of 30, smoke less than two a month, uh, so it isn't addictive. It, it doesn't appeal to youth. We have negligible that youth was access. Huge. That was huge when that came out to be able to show that. The, the country went to 21. That was a loss from 18 to 21. Did not affect anything. I didn't like that it happened because I'm a strong believer. You go to war. You can have a cigar when you come you home vote. or whatever. You can yeah. vote and all this. Uh, but how much was it going to affect me? I fought hard all the way through it. But when it ended up happening, how bad is this going to hurt you? I said, not at all. You know, I, I can count on one hand how many 18-year-old kids ever came in to buy a cigar, and usually it's a prop for you know Halloween or something like that. It's not that they're really going to smoke it. And that was a big victory early on last January. The FDA acknowledged that premium cigars are their lowest enforcement priority because of the lack of appeal to, to youth. You don't see kids smoking premium cigars on the playground. Which means that you, that, that puts a, a little more pressure on you to get this legal definition in because now, okay, this segment can be not, not left alone, but you can let your guard down a, a little bit yeah. and start playing offense maybe. It, it, it's really tiered regulation, like, you know, the continuum of risk, putting all those factors together. But with the court decision and then the FDA actually used that definition uh, late last year when they released the PMTA pre-market review and substantial equivalence rule, which in the administration changeover was pulled. It, all, a lot of regulations um, are pulled during the first 30 days of a new administration, which that was. So they're re-examining that. Um, but it was monumental and a good talking point for us that we're coalescing around this definition as, as an industry, as Cigar Rights of America, as the Premium Cigar Association to protect those products. And, you know, I think our biggest challenge right now is everything that's gone on with e-cigarettes and vaping mm. and distinguishing ourselves from that. Because right. there is, you know, and I'm a, a free market guy. You know, we were talking earlier about things like that. But, um, you know, we are not e-cigarettes and we are not vaping. Yeah. And we don't need to throw them under the bus at all. Let them fight their own battle. Yep. But the, and that was the point of doing it in New Hampshire. No, let everybody fight for themselves. I just want to say this is what a premium cigar is. It's not that. How can you classify a premium cigar as vape? I mean, nothing to do with each other at all. And you're choosing nicotine content. Like nicotine's a bad word. There's nicotine in tomatoes and, and yeah. all kinds of different things. Eggplant. Yeah. But... Um, you know, you're not going to classify a premium cigar and say uh, in an eggplant and categorize them as the same as why would you classify a cigar with vape? And I think the attention went very strong as vape got popular. All of a sudden, they went after cigars. And all the legislation that you see that's introduced about tobacco products, about vaping, a lot of times it will encompass premium cigars in it. And that's when we really have to hammer home. And it's you're seeing it from both the taxation perspective as well as the regulations and restrictions perspective. So we, you know, the Durban uh, bill was recently introduced, S411, federally which would be a 500 to 1,000 percent tax increase for premium cigars because it equates all tobaccos at one level and you know, basically doubles the cigarette tax and then extends premium cigars to that same tax threshold. And it's, they get creative with things because it's a maternal health bill is the you know, main focus of this legislation, yeah. but the pay for is there. So we've been fighting back hard, working with Senate Finance Committee to say, no, this is, and you have to be active and vigilant on anything that comes up. We can't disregard things because we know they don't have the votes. And there yeah. are certain things, 
you know, I think part of my role is educator, educate lawmakers and regulators about premium cigars, what they are and what they're not. But it's also a cheerleader rabble rouser to get retailers, get customers, get staff, you know, excited and comfortable enough to advocate before their elected officials. It's intimidating in Washington to go to the marble buildings and meet with a member of Congress. So we want to provide those training mechanisms and tools for you to effectively communicate. And it would be so nice. There's a lot of cigar smokers out there, but they're just relaxing cigar smokers. They don't, they don't even want to hear this. And I know that's why I premised the show is you need to listen to a little bit of a segment because it turns people off. And we, we know from past episodes, but we bring it up every once in a while to end up doing it because it would be so important. would be as strong as the NRA if we were only all together and say, no, don't take my guns away. Don't take my cigars away either. And if you think it's not going to happen, look at other countries. As bad as we have it here, look at Australia, look at Canada, plain packaging. and Or even look at the bill New Zealand just put yeah. out that uh, if it goes into effect in 2022, anybody that turns 18 after 2024 will never be allowed to buy tobacco. Yeah, crazy. So they're looking is to it, eradicate it from the country. Josh, are they looking at cigars in under the definition of nicotine delivery system? Is that where the problem is? Uh, is the definition to separate away from nicotine delivery systems? You know, that's part of it. I think that, you know, we're trying to distinguish ourselves as a unique category that requires tiered regulation. And there's a number of factors that go into it. Usage patterns, um, user profile. I think that, you know, in the definitional discussion that you were talking about earlier, you know, one of the things that we fought hard against and will continue to fight hard against at both the federal and state level is the economic quantifier. Premium cigars should not have an economic quantifier or a minimum price point. And that's, we saw that federally with yeah. the Pallone bill last year. California tried to do that with, you know, $12. So it's, um, it's a continual challenge. The nicotine delivery device uh, argument is something that is purported by the anti-tobacco groups, folks within government, but it's really about five or six different factors. But a, but a nicotine patch is a nicotine delivery system. Right. Mm -hmm. and, so, and they, they want to force they us want, to have them. They want that at the counter because they, they're saying that smoking is the smoking gun, so to speak, when we know from things like monograph number nine that the, the number of people, and, and Dr. Mark S. Mikosi, the number of people that get lung cancer, 75% of them are never smokers. Yeah. The other 25% were smokers. So obviously smoking is not what causes lung cancer. We should be putting our time and energy into figuring out what it is that, that causes it, not, oh, it's smoking and we're going to syntax the shit out of it. Yeah, and you know, next week I am presenting along with uh, Scott Pierce, uh, our executive director, Mike Copperman from Cigar Rights of America. Uh, we're presenting to the National Academy of Sciences about they're doing a, a long-term study. Well, two years it will be released next year, commissioned by the FDA about the health effects and usage of premium cigars. So, you know, we're, we're going to be purporting a lot of health evidence that has been collected over the past 10 years, paid, some paid for by the industry, but a lot of it is studies that the NIH and the FDA have commissioned themselves. Right. Everything in my talking points when I go to an elected official, it's NIH, FDA data. It's not some, yeah. you know, fake fabricated study. Which, right. is, which is the greatest thing, and that's what I loved about monograph number nine. Here they were trying to, to say how bad cigars were, and at the end of it, the findings did not work out. Because the they, they separated everything out. When you separate yes. the data out and you say, okay, these are cigar smokers consuming one to two cigars a day, holy shit, they don't get lung cancer. Oh my God, they don't get coronary heart disease. Yeah, these things don't end up happening. They don't get COPD. And they paid for it. They did it as opposed to there's lots of studies that the cigar industry did, but it looks like, oh, you guys are trying to pad this to make it yourself look. They did it themselves. Yeah, and I think, you know, Last year, it was definitive. We've won the argument about youth access. So that's something that we can kind of, we, I mean, we can't neglect it and not, you know, fully uh, purport that. But 
you know, it's something where I feel as though we've had substantial victories on that. So it's now getting into some of the health uh, nitty gritty to use the data that has already been collected for them to affirm in this next study. And, you know, it, it, it is a, a challenge. This new study could be beneficial to the industry and it also could be harmful as they consider regulations. And they said in the, the initial meeting that, you know, the commission isn't tasked with coming up with policy recommendations. That study is going to be used for policy sure, recommendations. Sure. Let's be honest. And I'll tell you, every underage kid that ever came in here to buy cigars was sent in here because then we get a little card after that says, oh, you carded them and you, you turned them away. Thank you. You did a good job. Every single one of them. It's like it, it doesn't, there's not ones that, uh, geez, I wonder if I'm going to get the card for that. No, yeah. it comes in every single time. And the, the only ads where you see kids smoking are the ones from the FDA. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, right. it's kind of crazy. It's crazy. So you mentioned Cigar Rights of America and our friend uh, Glenn Loop uh, retired from the Cigar Rights of America and actually showed up on your doorstep. Absolutely. It's been incredible to work with Glenn. He's a wealth of knowledge. He's, I consider him a good friend. He's mentored me through this. You know, I've been a consumer for a decade. I've been a lobbyist for a decade, but worked. I actually, my career trajectory started in motorcycles. I see that. that was yes. my first lobbying gig. Didn't ride a motorcycle, but it was the first thing available. Um, you end up riding a motorcycle? I rode ATVs and I did, I went to the motocross stuff and okay. kind of immersed myself. But you don't own a motorcycle. So Don't own a motorcycle no. yet, you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe in the future. And then uh, I actually worked in public health. I worked for the American Diabetes Association for a year and then uh, community banks. But this is the first issue area that I've lobbied for that I have a true passion for. And like I say, I'm a consumer first and I want to see this protected so that I can enjoy it. In my apartment in D.C. and in the office, they're both smoking permissible. I have friends. It's where, you know, you get to enjoy like the, the folks that are here. You're gathered. You're having discussions. There's no better discussion place than a cigar lounge. And in the cigar industry, the ones, the, the growers, the manufacturers who are passionate about cigars personally that I got to know over the years are the best ones. The retailers who are passionate about cigars are the best retailers, and it's going to go all the way down to government affairs also. Yeah. If you're passionate about cigars, it's going to play much better than well, it's my job and that's it. I'm yeah. not into it, but it's well, there. you know, this January we were talking before the show. I went to Nicaragua, wanted to see the blending process, wanted to meet manufacturers. I told John Anderson, our president, put me behind the counter. I want to learn, you know, all all of the different elements to it so that I can be a so better you ambassador. In I'm I, I I did the retail certificate <laughs> okay. uh, over COVID. I'm like no time lost. You know. Did the certification, Jorge Armenteros yep. does a great job there. Um, and um, I think that's the next phase. I said, if you need somebody over the summer, I, you know, I can't do during the week, but I, if you need somebody, I want to learn this process. Oh, boy. So. Oh, boy. Well, that's a different world, but yeah. well, welcome to so it. I knew, I knew we had the right man for the job because as a fellow ginger, he walked in not hiding behind his gingeriness. He's got an orange uh, pocket square in his pocket yes. like, hey. My beard's red. Yep. I got this. <laughs> There's a certain tenacity to us, Ginger. Yeah, absolutely. we got to stick together. That's right. So what's Glenn, Glenn doing for PCA? So Glenn will, uh, he's our director of state affairs. Uh, he and I, and I told him, our department is small. You know, we've had consolidations. Right. We've had, you know, the furloughs, which was a very challenging time. We're an all hands on deck organization. Glenn has a lot of relationships in the federal sphere. He has a lot of relationships with retailers, manufacturers. So we're, we're a team unit. There's no divide federal and state. Like this is my lane. This is your lane. We're working together. We're trying to do comprehensive programs that, you know, appeal and, and get traction with retailers and manufacturers to have buy-in. We have limited resources, but we want to get the most bang for our buck and uh, empower folks. So Glenn has been advising with us. We're coming up with fundraising campaigns. I just met with him last week for an all-day meeting with Scott talking about the trade show, programming, how to equip people at the grassroots level. And we're, uh, we're tr really trying to work with state associations, empower them, 
be a benefit. We pay for technology resources. We pay for um, informational resources that we can share um, with these state associations. And um, we want to see more use, you know, voting tools. You can go now cigaraction.org, which is our grassroots website. It's really for the consumer, but it's for retailers to use that with their consumers in order to get involved in the political process and become uh, ambassadors for the cigar industry. Okay. And when this furlough thing happened, there was Scott and you were the last two guys left. Yeah. So the trade show was canceled. There needs to be somebody at the helm, and the only other person is you because really the PCA is about government affairs. So everybody needs to understand that. The consumer needs it, especially you, the retailer, and you talk about, and we spend money on this and we spend money on that. The money is coming from the retailer to become a member. Yeah. And this thing of I'm not going to the trade show this year so I won't be a member is not acceptable. You're not joining a membership to go to the trade show. The trade show is a gift for you to be from, for be a member, um, but you need to be pay your every dues. retailer. You pay, pay your, your dues. dues. It's not a lot of money. It's the least you can do. The least you can do. Um, there's also a pack. Yes. Are you allowed to talk about that? Yeah. Okay. You know, we, we give to candidates that are um, supportive of premium cigars. We ha host a fundraising series in Washington uh, during non-COVID times. Pretty much every week we're meeting with staff and elected officials, <coughs> some through the PAC, some through those educational. Uh, one of the things that I started when I came on board to PCA is a public engagement series where we open up the townhouse. You know, we have retailers, manufacturers to come in to talk about some of the nuances of the you know premium cigar industry. We had Pete Johnson show the movie Hand Rolled. Yeah. We had Drew Newman talk about the American story um, and really engage with folks that are the staff members that ultimately have a great say in how their boss votes um, when it comes to these issues. We want to be a resource to elected officials, not just coming to them saying, hey, we have a problem, you know, this needs to be voted right. down. No, it's, you know, when bills come up, what are the policy considerations? How can we get you to yes on a decision that supports our industry, but know that, you know, Dave, we want you to be the first guy when, uh, you know, Senator Shaheen mm. needs something or has a question about tobacco policy, you know, they might not agree with us every time, right. and we understand that, but creating those communication channels are important. Yeah. So time to step up uh, to the retailers out there. Is there anything the consumer that's listening can do? Yeah, I think, you know, cigaraction.org, that's a, a resource where you can find information. I wanted to make our department very transparent. You know where PCA stands on things. So there's policy statements out there, characterizing flavors, which you guys mentioned earlier. You know, we t talk about, we have a whole position statement on that because if you're describing something as cocoa or uh, chocolate or whatnot, you should be able to do that. That's a free speech issue. You're educating your consumers on all of the different elements and shelf talkers, the manufacturers yeah. should be able to do it. But it's a cigar media issue where you're able to describe what this tastes like. There's no character. There's no flavor in this. Right. There's no chocolate in yeah. it. But you know, we describe it as it's a little chocolatey <coughs> yeah. taste because tobacco is going to pick up nuances of flavors. And speaking of that, uh, you have blended a cigar. I have, and it, th th this was my like my shining moment, um, in in one that I, I mean, I was a kid like in a candy store, Disneyland, just being in Nicaragua, learning, going to the different factories. I was grateful. Uh, Luciano from Ace Prime hosted me for a week this January, and uh, put together a cigar called El Politico. Um, it's uh, I like dark cigars, like pretty much the earth. I smoke quickly, so yeah. long Churchill size. Uh, we call we call the cigar El Politico, and it's a gift cigar instead of a crappy business card, which you get this time. I'm going to send you the oh, El okay. Politico. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, <laughs> that we, hold we, you to we, it. We just finished the band to it, um, and it's a gift cigar that you know if I meet with a staff member or a member of Congress with the gift rules, you can. 
buy a cup of coffee, and this is under that threshold. Yeah. Um, and it's my taste profile. I, you know, worked with Luciano on that, and uh, you know, called El Politico, got the capital on there, and um, I'm grateful for the opportunity that he afforded me, and to also learn about the process and, you know, all of those different elements. Going into this, it's like drinking from a fire hose. There's so many different, mm. and we were talking earlier, the internal politics is sometimes tougher yeah. than the actual politics. So um, it, we're excited. I got 3,000 coming, uh, I think, in the next two weeks. Really? And, okay. Yeah, I, I bought the... My, I was saying my apartment looks like a cigar lounge. I got a 4,000 count humidor, just came in with the rabbit airs. And it's one of those things where I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in on the cigar industry and the premium cigar space. And I couldn't be happier for this project. Well, well lucky to have you. Thank you and welcome in. Um, what do you think of this little cigar? Not, not your size? So, not, it's, it's c- cigarillos are fine. I will smoke them occasionally yeah. with, with coffee. I always universally call them the Clint Eastwood cigars. Yeah. I feel like High Plains Drifter is <laughs> going right. on in, in the background, the, or the good, the bad, and the ugly, do to do, you know. So, uh, but I don't, I don't mind cigarillos. I think that they're, they're, there's, in the morning tends to be the time. I won't smoke a cigarillo late at night. Yeah. Um, but uh, they're definitely good. Good. Uh, Dave, Warren in the chat room says the problem is they're too feminine, and he's not going to be pulling one of these out around his buddies. <laughs> no. No. Uh, <laughs> he liked it, though. It's good. Yeah. It's a good, good change of pace. Well, Josh, thank you so much for coming on here. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to uh, get beat up pretty bad with um, – we have been getting pr- uh, beat up pretty bad on that NFT cigar, but we sold a bunch. And we're going to report the numbers uh, where we are right now. We're giving out, um, this time we're giving it to Cigar Rights of the World. You know that organization. Not only is it trouble here in the United States, it's all over the world when it comes to cigars. They want to beat us up. So, uh, and when we come back, we're going to get even smaller than this. Ooh, and, great. Uh, still a premium cigar in New Hampshire, but not so in the rest of the country. Does the federal government overshoot the state? So it depends. I, I can't give you a clean answer. Okay. On that, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. The, the uncertainty that happens in the cigar industry is, is not good either. So uh, we're live in the Toscano Cigar Stage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Are you a member of the Cigar Authority Care Package? Well, if not, the time, my friend, is now. For just $24.99, you'll get four premium cigars delivered to your door each month. And we'll smoke each one of those cigars on the Cigar Authority podcast with you. I don't know if that's really a benefit. Sure it is. We will judge the construction, flavors, and review the cigars, and you can see how right or wrong we really are. You might be surprised. Four premium cigars delivered to you for $24.99, and you can quit any time, but you won't. The value is incredible. Want to take the Cigar Authority Care Package to the next level? Sign up or upgrade to the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. For just $5 more, you get an extra cigar and usually something special. That's five cigars each month, all different. Find the Cigar Authority Care Package on thecigarauthority.com and sign up today. The Cigar Authority Care Package. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General warning, tobacco smoke increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease, even in non-smokers. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world. 
Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics. This is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th Anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the decade on steroids. The 15th Anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary, Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary, Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This is Terrence Riley from Aganor Salif and you are listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we got him coming up real soon. Is that next week? Next, next week. week. Next week. Next week. We're back and we're smoking small cigars and we're about to get even smaller. This is the smallest premium cigar in the world. <laughs> Actually, in the rest of the United States, it's not even a premium cigar. But here in New Hampshire, this is a premium cigar. So this is the smallest so you can be. We're, we're going with it anyway, huh? We're doing it because we can. So why not? What do we that, have here, Barry? That seemed to move very quickly from the world to just New Hampshire. Well... It is a premium cigar because we're in New Hampshire, but if you go across the border, <laughs> so it's not a premium cigar. If I take these home, that's it. You can't. I you're can't in another take state. It. You're breaking uh. the law. Well, you're not breaking the law. You're not smoking a premium Going cigar. Going to jail. But uh. while you're smoking it here, you are smoking a premium cigar. So it could transition just as I cross the border. And, all, and then all of a sudden, you know, it, it was a premium cigar. Well, now it's it not isn't. a premium <laughs> cigar. And it's the, the same. It affects the flavor, I think. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try that on the way home. See, see if it does. All right, today's second cigar is a Dos Hombre, and it comes from the Dominican Republic for Two Guys Smoke Shop. The size is four and a quarter by 30, and it's a Dominican Puro with a natural wrapper. It, too, is part of the Cigar Authority care package. And a tin of 10 will cost you twelve ninety nine, and a sleeve of five tins, which is 50 cigars, will cost you forty nine ninety nine, which is just $1 per cigar. It's a savings of almost $15 or 23% off the box price on twoguyscigars.com. 
If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try 2 com. That's the number two, GuysCigars.com, and you'll only find them here. Yep, and we had these for a long time, and then New Hampshire changed the law and said a premium cigar had to be $2 or more, so it was a non we had to get rid of it. We stopped carrying mm. for a while. Then they took away the dollar amount, which is what they're trying to make happen nationally. Sometimes right. states are connecting dollars to it. What's the difference? What it cost? If, if I ra- raise the price to $2, then it would be okay. But it's a dollar, so it's not okay. I, I think they're still confused. They think the kids won't buy them. They're not buying them anyway. No, so. no. So, uh, but if you look at this, different than, than the... United Cigar Pencil that we smoked earlier, there's a cap on this. Hand-applied cap cap on the cigar, handmade. We're going to have to actually cut it. All tobacco, inside and out, more than 50% long fill. Which is easy enough because it's so short. Yep. And uh, here it is, so we're going to have to cut it and light it. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax, and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and you know it, excellence. Excellence. Brown sugar on the cold draw. I have a little marshmallow. So because we're cigar media, apparently, we can we describe. Yeah. We, we can describe right now. Unless the, It's a moving target. That's the whole thing of, uh, you know, how many do I produce? And then the next thing you know, they change the law and say it's not a premium. And then I say, oh, can't sell these now. Put them aside. Okay, now we can sell them. You, for a business, you got you to gotta make, <sighs> make the rules. Tell me what the rules are. Right. And then but we, from, a, from a media standpoint, I say no matter what the law is, we go business as usual, and we make our descriptions and let them take us to court because you cannot infringe on our First Amendment right. If I want to say this tastes like marshmallow to me, I'll say it. A little vanilla, mm-hmm. almost a little pipe tobacco flavor. Have you ever had the giant marshmallows? Not the regular ones you make s'mores with. I'm talking the big mothers. They're, yes, I've done it all. You ever licked the outside <laughs> of that? Yes. That's what this is <laughs> on the cold draw. Not those tiny marshmallows. No, no, no. They, they come inside the hot chocolate. Not the Swiss dried Miss ones. Out yeah, crappy. that's no. bullshit. No, yeah. you've got to lick the full-size marshmallow. You've got to have some surface area. And you're right. It's just the lick. It's that's the lick. It. Yeah. Nailed Speaking it. of licking. I feel like Josh encouraged this to happen Don't lick. More. Don't <laughs> lick this. We're going to light our cigar with the Land Shark by Lotus. It features a flip top, three jets, Double wall protection, all fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank, an easy adjustment wheel at the bottom, all for the low price of $19.99. That is the Landshark by Lotus. It's got a little bottle cap opener. I it's like cool. But it has a bottle cap top. Do top. not call that an opener. Someone's going to sue us. Hmm. You cannot open anything with this right. except the lighter. Wouldn't it be nice if they added a bottle opener to this? That's a nice cover. <laughs> That's a nice cover you just did there. That, that would even be better. But... It's a cool lighter for that case. You're having people over the house and you're having some beers and smoking cigars and stuff. This is the lighter you put. And you get the you can buy a little pack that has the lighter and the ashtray. The ashtray looks like a bottle cap. Yeah. Mm. So and you got like, a whole theme going like on. And it's like $29. Or right. It's crazy. Crazy low. All right. So how is the, the Cigar Authority survey going? It's out of control. It's, it's way of- too time consuming. So you actually have to do work for once in your life yeah, and you're complaining? I, yeah, one for question. one five-week period, I actually earn my keep. But just the last question. The last question. It's at the point now where like, there are some ridiculous answers. that I, I it's, would four, like, it's 400 things long right now, but you know, somebody asked for Prince Harry to be a guest. All right, mental note. If somebody say, else says it, I'll add. I'll now, add Prince Philip, who passed away, yes. you know, had a cigar named after him. Did not know? Oh, yes, I did. Macanudo Prince Philip. Yep. Did you think of that when it happened? That's all I thought. No, because you only think of yourself. Yes. <laughs> I'm all about me. Premium but yeah, cigar? it's still going. We're going to do the results in a couple of weeks. And yep. uh, every Monday, it picks so, up again. And we don't need the whole 400, but just give us a dozen or so of the best and the worst. Because I like mm. the worst ones. All too. right. Anything that's interesting of like, this is crazy. Like Prince Harry... Does he smoke cigars? Probably not. Yeah. Mm. 
would we want to interview him? No. Like, what, what is the mindset of someone that puts that? All right, I want to put the dickiest thing I possibly can on this survey and not give him any information it's that'll be helpful. That's you would do. It's, it's unhelpful. 100% true. Um, the Whiskey Miser says toasted rice crispy treats for this mm. cigar. There's yeah, the that's, marshmallow That's like licking a marshmallow. Yeah. There it is. That's, that's a good. good one. So he, he's right He's added list. to the show. That's yeah. how you add to the show right there. Is it, he, I mean, he could sit in. That, that's a good one. That's very good. You could, you could Whiskey Miser, if you're ever up here, we're going to we're gonna have you on. Is he related to Heat Miser, do you think? <laughs> no, but there is a whiskey um, podcast. Podcast or website. Just a website, right? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's you. Oh, I thought we were talking about the whiskey miser. No. He actually yeah, the, uh, was talking about you for once and yeah. you missed the drop. I totally missed it. Over my head. Jesus. Uh, yeah, the liquorauthority.com. New well, reviews every Sunday and a podcast coming this fall. Very and unique. It's not name. just whiskey, though. No, it's the liquor authority. So there's rum, liquor. bourbon, vodka. <laughs> Whatever's in the cabinet. It, yeah, whatever I feel like getting lit on. It's time for the Romeo and Juliet, a best email of the week. By the way, Whiskey Miser says Heat Miser's his cousin. Okay, did you did you do a review already? Yeah, there's uh, three of them up there right three. now. Three. What are they? Uh, Angels Envy, uh, Floyd DeCanya, and uh, Evan Williams. Okay. Brought to you by Romeo and Julieta Cigars. This week's prize is a hat, an ashtray, a lighter. And is that a band saver, Barry? Yes. It's a band bank. A band bank. Which I, w- I want. Because <laughs> that is a piggy bank for your cigar bands. How cool is that? I like Now, there's something I don't have. I have a hat. I have an ashtray. I have a lighter. I don't have a piggy bank. Well, we know Raphael, you know, Dow listens. So, Raphael, send one to Dave. Yeah. I think maybe I'll write in next week and earn it. <laughs> jo- Jonathan Are we allowed? Had, Jonathan has a spank bank. He does. That's yeah. different. That's different. That's different. No, I'd rather have the band bank. That's cool. That's unique. Yeah. It's cool. It's different. So you're taking one. How of big these. is it? Have you seen it and touched it? Yeah, it's about uh, maybe ten inches high. Are we still talking about my spank it's bank? Like 144 <laughs> ring gauge. Huh. Okay. And it's got a slot like it's got like a, a piggy slot, bank? just like the piggy bank, but way too small for any coin, unless you can come up with a crazy coin story for it. And and how do you get it out? Yeah, cap, cap, uh, cap unscrews. Okay. Oh, nice. It's a cool thing. We need one. All right. You and, literally and just spend more time talking about that band <laughs> bank than you, the first email is going to cover. You have more for next week? I have a, a month's worth, four shows. Oh. Okay. So I'm trying to get people to write in because we didn't get very many this week. So if you just shut up for a second, <laughs> you see where I'm going with this. And now. See, you went and brought out Maduro Dave. <laughs> He's I'm trying to help him out because he told me during the break. This is sun-grown get, Dave. He's not full Maduro yet. We didn't yet. get very many, so I'm trying to n- help him, but he wants Dave, to go. I don't know if this is helpful, but Ross says this one is the best cigar for sitting on the toilet <laughs> taking a dump. I've done it. I've done it, and it does work. It's the good. following message was submitted <laughs> through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. I'm just going to do the show without you. All right. Uh, with respect to uh, the lighter firecracker. And Douglas writes, a light firecracker could not be a sparkler. It would have to be a snap and pop that little kids throw on the ground. Then they get brave and throw at each other. That's the... See, now we're, the, da- we're down to emails like this. So yeah. you could win this because <laughs> this is what you're up against. Wow. I don't want any more books written no, in the know. email. One paragraph. Keep it to one paragraph. Um, so Especially since we've got to listen to you read. You've got to keep them short. Exactly. So if you're smoking this little Dos Ombre cigarello, you'll see it says Dos Ombre in it, and then you see two people there. The guy in the yellow shirt was me 36 years ago. That was... That's a I can see size? the resemblance. Huh? Was that actual size 36 <laughs> years ago? Well, I don't know about actual size, but uh, I remember the oddest drawing the picture I said... Yeah, I'm way too fat in that picture. <laughs> I said, can you slim me down because I'm on a diet? And he says, I'll change it after you lose the weight. That was 36 <laughs> years ago, and uh, he did the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't change much, but um, there we go. So you mentioned who the person in the yellow shirt was, the other person? The other person is was my brother, still my brother, but he passed away. Uh, my brother John, he's got a striped uh, shirt. I remember him posing for this, too. And they would, the camera that the guy used, he had a stand there, and it was one of those cameras you click the button, and then the picture slides out, 
immediately. Polaroid. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't know what that is. Younger That's, people. No, I'm not. I'm not shocked that. I'm not shocked that someone wouldn't know what a Polaroid is. I'm saying. Why are you hiring an artist and the best camera he had was a Polaroid? That's what he used. And so the picture, I still have the picture. Good. After, but it all cracked. Yeah. That happens. 36 years later, yeah. they, don't, they don't last. So I still have it, though. Of There was the picture standing there. And I believe, and I can't look really good, it might be a Toscano in huh. my brother's mouth. One of them, it's either me or him. I'm pretty sure it's him. If you, if you notice there's an angle on it, I think it was a Toscano uh, on his. We mentioned Toscano during, yeah. the, during here. So. You never sure. mentioned that when we had the guys from Toscano on, which would have been a fun little fact. The real question, you guys had these actual outfits? I was wearing, yeah, that's what we were wearing. Huh. So he was wearing a blue striped shirt and I had a yellow shirt. And that wasn't the 70s. It was 85. No, the shirts were purchased in the 70s. Oh, right. <laughs> That's for sure. It was 70s clothing. Yeah. I could tell the difference between uh, the clothes that Dave has bought 10 years ago, which is the last time he bought clothes, right. and then the rest of them. I can tell the difference. Now, he has a couple shirts that are more recent vintage. Yeah, those are the 10-year-old ones. And I think there's a couple that are newer than 10. I have no idea. I don't purchase <laughs> yeah, you don't my own clothes. This is almost as bad as the coin story. <laughs> but it's time to take a peek into the asylum and hear yeah. Barry's story. Take us home, Barrents. From our friends at Asylum Cigars. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum cigars. <laughs> <laughs> University students will not be mocked down for poor spelling or grammar or punctuation in exams because it would be elitist. Academics have been told that insisting on good written English discriminates against minorities and those who went to underperforming schools. Therefore, I would like to propose not only do you look past the grammar errors on our website, but we also stop picking on Dave for his verbal spellings, a.k.a. mispronunciations, and that's not only cool. insane, it's a sign. It might be time for you to go to college. No, I'm not going no. back to school. I'm not right. going back. I will not go back. <laughs> I didn't like it the first time. Next week, uh, April 24th, smoking in a car, smoking cigars in a car. So we're going to get into that. There's a right way, a wrong way. We're going to show you the ways around it, how to do it. Terrence Riley from Aganosa. Aganosa. <laughs> I want to say ah, right? It's whatever you say Agonosa. now, we can't judge you because that would be elitist. It, it is. I just like Agonosa how long your mouth stays open before you say it because you know you're going to screw it up. I got a 50-50 shot and I do it wrong. Aganosa cigars, Terrence Riley, back on the road. He's yeah. going to come up here. Live in person. We're going to do a few days with him in the stores. Yeah, he's a good dude. So he's coming up next week. The following week, we're going to talk about farming tobacco. And Husto Aroa is going to join and us. And any of these weeks could be sans Dave. Because Remember I used to say Gusto Aroa? And now yeah. I say Husto all the time. I got it. Yeah, you got it. He'll change his name now and mess me up, but it's Husto Aroa. The Bambino could pop out any time now, and you may end up disappearing. So it could be a Dave Free Show. And then the following week, we're going to go off the rails a little bit, and we're going to do Coming to America. You saw the movie Coming to America? Yeah. Coming to America 2 came out, right? Well, Coming to America. Coming to, the, the emphasis. number two, right. Yeah. Coming to America. And somebody came from Kenya, Africa, and came to America, and he happens to be a cigar smoker. He happens to do his own podcast, and... We are Kabathi Gaturo is his name. Yes. And we are going to, they're going to actually open a cigar lounge in Kenya, Africa. What? Yeah. So we've been working for two years with them, yep. getting ready for it, and we're ready to send the first shipment to them. And it took a long time to allow this to end up happening. And they're going to start a culture in Kenya for cigar smokers. So we'll get into, into a lot of that with him. But mostly, we're going to be talking about the movie coming to America. And I gotta, I'm going to test him. I know he doesn't listen to the show. So I got some trivia questions for him. I asked him if he saw him. 
saw the movie and make sure he watches number two, and I get some trivia questions for him yeah, about coming to America. He's less than he's less than pleased about that part he of the is, interview. <laughs> but we're gonna have fun with him anyway. And the following week is TPE, so we're gonna whether we go or we don't go or we get a report from it. We're gonna see what's gonna go on with TPE. I I will have been vaccinated by then, but the two weeks have not passed that I'm still not supposed to do whatever. So I'm up in the air. I'm up in the air right now. What? When is your second shot? The 5th. So the 19th. So, so it th- starts the 15th. Yeah. It's close enough. What do you get? He the, doesn't do, the he like to do the wrong thing. What's my choices? Pfizer, Moderna. Moderna, I think. Yeah. Moderna. Yeah, you and I both got the same one. Yeah, and you didn't get. You got a little sick on the uh, second this, one. Uh, almost twenty four hours after the second one, I had chills and a low grade fever that disappeared after about six to eight hours. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So, um, I can't let you guys go on your own on the on the eighth. I don't think you can pull it off. Where I want to go with the uh, coming to America. <laughs> so no, I, I can't get sick. We can't do that without yeah. you. I have the questions already written down, but... It wouldn't be the same. Yeah. So I'm going to try to stay strong. There's nothing I can do, right? Drink a lot of water. Can you do anything? That's like not, you're not going to miss the show because you're yeah. feeling achy. No. I'm more concerned that uh, Gianna has the baby. Yep. That, that can happen any day now. Just right. bring the baby with you. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. They won't mind. They're not even allowed to go to the hospital. Got to wait until no. she comes home. They won't even huh. let me go. So then you can't miss a show. If you don't have to go to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, you say hi to the baby, come do a show. All right. Hey, NFT, Atabay. We talked about the Atabay Black, the NFT. We're getting laughed at. It's, it's the craziest thing. Um, but I have the count as of this morning. We sold 12. Wow. Well, it's actually 13 since you looked. Really? Yeah. Another one. Did, another you, one. did you buy another one? I did not. Oh, okay. He bought the first one, though. So 13 of them. There's only 25 singles. And then there's the boxes. The boxes are not going, but they're $1,000 or yeah. so many Bitcoins or whatever it is. Uh, Ethereum. Ethereum. <laughs> Ethereum. Uh, and I haven't bought any because I haven't figured. You sent me a video to do it. I, I took all kinds of notes. It's complicated, yeah. I think you'd have to sit with me. But yeah. I want to say uh, verbally thank you for last week that after the show you got oh, me yeah. ready. I did the um, professor. Um, ask the professor. Yeah. Ask I think pro- that's what it's called. Ask the Professor podcast, the... Um, the marathon. Uh, yeah, 26-hour marathon. I only did one hour, but uh, it, it was interesting. And we had... Um, I interviewed Cigar Lover 12, who's... I, and that was a great interview. I mean, she... She's, She's a legit. real cigar She's person. She's legit. I mean, yeah. it was better than the guy before you who was just talking about himself. <laughs> Dave's not <laughs> comment. We, we won't say who that was. No, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> But um, way to make it uncomfortable, Barrett. <laughs> open open C.io if you want to dare uh, buy one of those NFT cigars and see. Yeah, uh, and you know if you don't know how, if you just go to uh, YouTube and do a search for easiest way to buy on Open C or NFT, and it ain't easy. Um, it's multiple steps. You know, yeah. no step is particularly complicated. But so, not only are we trying to sell something that doesn't uh, exist, we got to teach people how to buy it. It's a, it's work to to do it, so that gets tough. And then there's the gas prices and all the bullshit that goes <laughs> along with it. Very very complicated, but uh, very interesting overall. I'm learning a lot about it. Uh, but let's get to the matchup of the week. It's time for the matchup of the week, and it's brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair Cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? Um, Let's go to Abraham Lincoln versus John F. Kennedy in a wrestling match in their prime. Oh, Abe's got it all day. Abe, because he was tall? Oh, yeah. He looked lanky and... and, uh, uh, I think he had a harder life than JFK. JFK was soft. Well, was, didn't he, he chop down all those cherry trees and that not lie about guy. it? Uh, that Who? was the other guy. That was the other guy. George, Jack. George Washington chopped yeah. the cherry trees down. Abraham Lincoln wore the big hat. I thought there was some story about Abraham Lincoln See, wrestling. I think it's... He I, was a wrestler? I think he may have been. Really? Maybe that's where that came from. I think wrestler. I'm going with Hey Lincoln. Abe Lincoln? Hey Lincoln. 
Habe. Hey, Blinken. What does that mean? Yeah. From uh, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Did you Robin say Hood, Abe? Men in Tights. Did you say he Abe likes Men in Tights. Does it surprise anybody? No. <laughs> Did you say Abe Lincoln? No, I said, hey, Blinken. Hey, nothing. nothing? No. The only person to watch that movie was you. <laughs> Pam gets and me. Pam. Pam gets me. So it makes sense. So does Freddie. Like he just pretending tights. like he doesn't. Dave? Yeah, I'm going Abe Lincoln. Yeah, there's no question. Abraham Lincoln, as a 21 year old in 1830, was the wrestling champion wow. of his county in <laughs> Illinois. How did you know that? I, I just had a thought. And, <laughs> how, and plus, he was a vampire hunter. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think he was his roommate, Abraham Lincoln. Was his roommate, maybe. <laughs> You're older than him, he is. But nobody said that John F. Kennedy had a bad back. Uh-huh. He had a very bad back. So the answer is Abraham Lincoln. a headache, Lincoln. too. Abraham Lincoln is the answer. Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lincoln. Hey, I can't Lincoln. believe you didn't get that. It's a Mel Brooks movie. It's a classic. Never saw it. Do you ever see it? No. Do you ever Nine see it? It's entire. No. No. Men in Tights, yeah. I'm going to skip over that one, right. right? Robin Hood Men in Tights was brilliant. Yeah. Never, yeah. I'm not going to do it. You going to watch The Godfather this week? No. Did you see The Godfather 3 redone? Yeah, to try to fix it? They fixed it. Was it good? It was a little different, and I sat through it. It's mm-hmm. the worst of the three, but yeah. it's worth it. I mean, it was horrible. Yeah, but it was, it was worth it. They, they right. fixed it. Fix it up a little maybe bit. I'll, maybe I'll check it out. Can we please go to a break and it stop talking it about this nonsense? No, watch the movie and see what it is. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, two more letters in the mailbag. They better be better than the first one because I think I get a piggy bank if that's the, if that's <laughs> the winner there. And uh, some more fun and games. We're live in the Toscano Sound stage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Andullo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. Experience the rich tradition of the legendary H. Upman brand with the latest addition to their iconic 1844 line. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo uses a rich, well-balanced blend of Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Dominican tobaccos and an extra-aged wrapper that offers a deep aroma with a bold finish. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo is sure to please adult smokers looking for a delicious, handmade, premium smoke that is aged to perfection. Surgeon General warning, cigar smoking can cause lung cancer and heart disease. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. 
that Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donuts. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. What's going on? This is Robert Kelly from Medfit, Massachusetts, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. I hope they have me back. I think I swore too much. We should have him back. Yeah. It's been a long time. He's traveling again. I see uh, a lot of the comedians I saw him are doing yep. shows. Yep. Yeah. He's yep. gotten multiple votes in our server. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's bring him back. Robert Kelly, you listening? Probably not. We'll bring him back. Uh, smoking the Dos Ombre tin, we call it. Yeah, I had to put mine down because I finished it. 30 minutes, though. Yeah. Pretty yeah. damn close to 30 minutes. I still got mine going. I'm going slow. I didn't have to relight. It's still staying lit. It's a perfect dog walking cigar. There we go. Can't especially use that. In the, especially uh, in the winter. 724 is a dog walker. <laughs> mm-hmm. Walking your pet. Walking a pet. Pet walking cigar. Like if you happen to have a macaw and it needs to go out. But twelve ninety nine yeah. for ten cigars. You buy one ten. Yeah, dollar twenty nine. I imagine cigar. you've got a cockatoo. A cockatoo. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's had a cockatoo. <laughs> There's no proof of that. I have no comment. He's never given it. This comes in natural and Maduro. Yes, this is the natural we we'll smoke. Mm-hmm. Correct. And of the first one we smoked, which was the United Cigar Pencil, that was the Maduro. Yeah. So I gave him Maduro. I, I, I actually, I actually I found the pencil to be more flavorful than the tin. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, there's I, a little I, more going I on. I like Maduro cigars more, so maybe I, that played I into it. So that the Maduro, which was the United, is stronger than this one. No. Yes. Yes, no. I would agree with yes, that. Yes, it's 100%. No. 100%. No. Same. No. All Absol- same. Absolutely wrong. Uh, thanks, everybody, for sharing our podcast that's out there. And I know the PCA is sharing the podcast right now, too. What are you laughing for? I'm laughing because you just went from like angrily saying it's uh, your you your, your idea is right and mine is wrong, and then you went syrupy sweet. Oh, thank you everybody for no, sharing our <laughs> podcast. You, because I'm I not know, Maduro Dave anymore. I'm natural Dave to you guys. You Mr. Just, J makes me Maduro Dave. No, I just feel bad for you because you just go to the opposite of whatever it is. If I said the sky is blue, you say it's not blue. Can't you just you two, automatically go to it. Can't you two yeah. just see you love each other? Yeah. <laughs> I love you. That you're in love with each other. Uh, I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. And we do this every morning. (laughs) Every (laughs) Every day. Morning. Both of us get here an hour early. (laughs) Just to go through the routine. And we should film it because... I say it to him every day. Every day. 15 minutes, we could do a daily podcast and it would be entertaining. Do you wake up at the end of it? No. No. They just walk away and that's done. What what has to happen is... (laughs) You, you can't go to a mic, then would be on. Right. It'd be just like have it, have, have it running, the tape is running, it. and then there it is because it is somewhat entertaining because I laugh out loud sometimes. <laughs> so what I started doing to train him is I, I play when I know he's coming in, I turn a playlist on it at a certain time, and then it's three songs, and he does a dance, <laughs> and then on the fourth song, he goes upstairs. And it's, <laughs> I've been slowly training him for months. So he true. does a and dance I say, and wow, make this a little is a love. Good, this is a good song. It's the first one. <laughs> it's the same, <laughs> same <three> song. <laughs> and then maybe a couple weeks in or something, I go, this is the same songs that I'm playing. He goes, yeah, I've been... <laughs> do you feel like you need to go upstairs? And he's like, yeah, I do. I feel like <laughs> yeah. I need to go up. I don't know why. It's because the time is tight. Pablog's dog, right? That's, That's right. what it is. It's the song Time is Tight, Ed Sullivan, which mm. used to be our outro song for years. And that lets him know, okay, this conversation's over. And he just makes his way upstairs. <laughs> the time is it's great. Right. Booker T and the MGs. That's right. Great song. 
Um, but no, seriously, with the the amount of sharing and stuff that's going on, very and good. sharing the thing, uh, because I'm saying this because we're getting a new audience. It's growing, and uh, so those people maybe they'll share too, and we can. I'm, after 11 years, 12 years, we're in the 12th year. We, we're continuing to grow. It's insane. It's pretty awesome. And I apologize to our MeWe fans. I have not been as active as I once was. I've had some stuff going on. but uh, Can we I'm, talk about that? I'm getting back. We cannot talk about it just yet. Yeah. We cannot talk about it. Yeah. Remember the last time we couldn't talk well, about it's it? It's probably a reconciliation. No. Well, they have met. Uh-huh. She had, she had one of my speakers and dropped it off and... Uh, we had a nice conversation. I was, in, I was in the building, but I didn't know what was going but on. The, uh, yeah, you would have gone to see oh, huh? The yes. fun thing is I went axe throwing with Sophie, my stepdaughter, or ex-stepdaughter, whatever, daughter. And uh, we had a blast for an hour in Hudson. Uh, would be a cool event, except, and I pitched the guy, no smoking. Then we're out. Then we're out. That's what and I said to him. I don't want to arm my employees or, <laughs> or customers. Here, everybody, have an axe. There's a, there, you it's, have an axe to grind? It's pretty, it's pretty safe how they have it set up. And it's, <laughs> pretty safe. I mean, you can still it can bounce back throwing, and get you. Throwing axes. But it was, it was a blast. I'm a little sore. It was a nice workout. It was uh, good. Jonathan, original pipeline says the Roma Craft Cro-Magnon that he's smoking tastes like tobacco with notes of tobacco with transitions of tobacco. That's a fair description. That's what Skip would want, Yeah, it's right? not wrong. No. He's not wrong. It's not wrong. Hey, the after show today, the topic is, you heard Nat Sherman, or whatever it's called now. It's a crazy name for it. Mm. Fergio Tijo or something yeah, like something that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, Mike Herklotz's Horrible company. Name. Now Davidoff is going to be the distributor of this brand that isn't even out yet. Mm. And two brands that are ready to come out very soon that haven't even hit the market. And Davidoff is going to be the distributor of it. Hmm. What does why? that say to you? <laughs> it, it says why. What's up with this? What's going on? And I is there a, a winner or a loser? I have a theory. Maybe I have off. thoughts too, but this is not really. We don't have time to get into yeah, this. Can we the after this show? move the after this show. to the after show? Yes. And I got to know if Dave takes the muzzle off me, and I could say what I want no. to say. Whoa. No, <laughs> no. The muzzle no. is staying on, as well as the ball gag hey, and your chastity don't, don't belt. Don't me a good time. I signed a contract that says I'm not supposed to say bad things. Really? Yes, I have. About you signed the contract. Hang on a second. Me. Yeah, Barry, did you sign that? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, okay, let's get to the Don Raphael offer of the day. And it's brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. They were a perfect client for this segment. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? Mr. Jonathan's tired today. I'm mm. a little tired. A little tired. Didn't get enough sleep. But for $5,000, would you stay awake for five straight days? No. At the, uh, I've done 50 plus hours before, and right around hour 45, I start hallucinating. It's not good. I'm not doing it. Not for 5,000. 10,000? I don't think so. Really? It's painful. Barry, $10,000? Stay awake for day? five days. Five days. 10,000 a day? No. No. No, it's wow. painful. You it's get the halfway no. mark. You can't do it. Can't do it? Start feeling nauseous. Your body starts to shake. You start shutting down. Really? It's bad. I'm not even sure I'd go 24 for that. Kind the time of that I, I quit. I've certainly done 24. Yeah. The time that I quit the show. How, how many hours did we do when we went to the tr we went to the IPCPR trade show? We flew back. We took naps on the plane. You took naps on the plane. I, yeah, don't I sleep remember there was a picture. Yeah. And then we worked all day. That was definitely 48 hours. Yeah, that was that was a lot. But I had taken an hour nap or whatever on the plane. I didn't. The um, I did 48 hours. The that time I quit the show. That was junk. That was the longest I ever stayed up. That was 50 plus hours. And I went Maduro Jonathan on you on the email and was just you not out, having you it. You grocery shopping. <laughs> I had worked all day. We did, the, we did the show. I went and worked all day for a gig. That gig lasted all night because it was a walk-a-thon. The next morning, cleaned everything up. Had to pick something up at the grocery store for my wife. And... I get home and you're giving me a hard time that the you, show wasn't up. Show wasn't up. Two days went by and you didn't load the show. Click the button. Yeah. I remember. He says, yeah, I quit. I said, okay. All right. Over the phone. I quit. <laughs> it was over text. It's way more mature <laughs> well, it wasn't than over text. the phone. I wasn't texting. You were texting. No. I wasn't texting Email. It was email. It was email. And there was texting. Maybe. 
But Dave wasn't. No, no, no. He had a lot of unopened text in his phone. <laughs> you quit over a, over an email? Yeah. You're rethinking taking him back now, aren't you? Yeah, it's too late. I'm entrenched. Wow. I didn't take him back. He just came. The following <laughs> message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com, and Nate writes with respect to the Cigar Authority. Hickory dickory doc, look at the clock. Here comes Maduro Dave. Oh, God. Who's mad. He's too damn old to host a rave. Speaking of my least fave, there's Mr. J. He says his wife left him, but we know he just wanted to dance with his friend Tim. Speaking of exercise and the gym, there goes Barry, who seems happy. I bet it's because he can see his third limb, so he's not as grim. Speaking of grim... I think he's not reading it properly. There yeah, goes yeah. Ed. It wasn't written properly. I'm Ron Burgundy. I read what's on the teleprompter. I know we're all a little surprised he woke up today and was able to get out of bed. That's Nate. Ed, bed. Oh, yeah. It's a rhyme. It's simple a rhyme. simple was, rhymes. You was, can't tell what the way Jonathan no, reads it. No, it's a bad poem. read. Uh, Write it like a poem if you want me to read it like a poem. Yeah. It wasn't that great either. No. So all you got to do is send your emails to the, <laughs> to the um, what? To go to the contact, yeah, go contact. To the contact us page. Hey, if we don't have a winner this week, you can keep the bank. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have. So far, I'm not voting for either one. We're going to have a winner. Uh, Eric writes to the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com with respect to Dunbarton Madness. Mm. Gentlemen, I generally consider myself a manly guy. I drive a dump truck, a pickup truck, and occasionally even a hand truck. I own a gun and a chainsaw, both for self-defense. Nice. And I have friends who are cops and firefighters. I even shared a cab once with that big guy from Game of Thrones. However, when it comes to cigar strength, my manliness falters. I generally look at what Dave likes to smoke and ask for something a bit milder. I once caught the spin smoking a Macanudo. It's for this reason that I've never tried anything from Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, despite the golden showering of praise <laughs> that always comes when these scars are mentioned. Then recently, Mr. Saka came on the show and said anyone could enjoy the original Sober Mesa. So I bought one and tried it out. Needless to say, about halfway through the cigar, I got a little green behind the gills and had to take a break. Well, I got caught up in one of my manly pursuits, probably ice fishing, and forgot about the cigar until I woke up the next morning. Realizing I had left it on the patio all night, a feeling of great shame came over me, not only because of the personal weakness, but the wasting of such a fine cigar. There was only one remedy. I brewed up a pot of black coffee. I skipped breakfast. I went to the patio and fired that bad boy up. Hmm. And to my surprise, it still tasted great. It burned just fine, and I didn't puke. Maybe manliness is all in your head. Ah. Oh. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> was, that, was that you? No, that's Eric. Wow. So, that so Paul Kraft, Kraft writes in the chat room that he's done writing anymore because if this is what Mr. J picks, what the heck? Whoa. I got three emails this week. Those are the three. Those are the three. I'm, you know what? I got four. I'm sorry. I got four. Uh, I did surveys for an organization and was the director of Survey Monkey. Uh, it tallied results and had charts and graphs. Just a thought. That was the fourth email. So that was just him making a charts suggestion. Charts and graphs. So the third guy gets it. Yeah. Um, We're not He should have had the Sober Mesa Brulee. Yeah. Not the original Sober Mesa. No, the Brulee it, is. Brulee is the one that's a, a tad down. And then strength. this sweet tip the, really ha keeps you from getting sick, sick from the nicotine. There we go. Yeah. Well, and I would say also you but can. But his stuff is juiced up, man. Oh, you, yeah. you can smoke it slower, and it's not that bad. You start to feel a little. You, you can tell the effects of the cigar early, early on. You don't have to keep puffing through it. Take a break. Go back to it. Go slow. Enjoy yourself. There's no need to get sick. Blow through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of drawing in every You're, once in a while, blow through it. A little sugar it. packet, put it under your tongue. There's a lot of a lot of ways that you can smoke a stronger cigar. Drink a lemonade. But it doesn't necessarily make you manlier uh, no. to smoke a stronger cigar. You ever drink a cigar, cigar with a lemonade? I'm sure I have. It's good. Works. I'm not voting for any of those three. I mean, it's I know, too late. I Eric know already three won. of you voted, but <laughs> I'm voting for Paul Graff's uh, forgotten email. Just because he feels left out that Jonathan refuses to read his email. <laughs> so I'm voting for Paul Kraft. Okay. Where's his email? Don't know. He sent it to Jonathan. He never picks it. Well, well let's if see if he sent it recently because I save them all. 
and let's see. We'll have a little. You guys talk amongst yourselves, and when I find it, well, well, if, you, if Barry's voting for Paul Kraft, uh, I want Robert Kraft to win this week. <laughs> He could use it. Now. Eric, just send me a friggin' <laughs> your address. While, he, while he's looking there, let, let's get to the Classic 3-Ray, brought to you by Classic Cigars. It's time for This Day in Classic History, brought to you by Classic Cigars. Classic Cigars are now the most affordable cigar brand in America. With prices as low as $1.50, this cigar has something for everyone. The Classic Connecticut is light and smooth. The Classic Maduro is bold, but never overpowering. The classic Cameroon sits somewhere in between with hints of sweetness, and the classic Cuban is a real knockoff of the taste and flavors from old-time Havanas. Classic cigars are sold in cost-saving bundles of 20 and sold in five great sizes, ranging from $1.50 to $2.25 per cigar, which makes classic the most affordable premium handmade cigar in America. Classic Cigars. I have three questions and two tiebreakers today because I'm going to need them. It's going to be that close. Really? Yeah. So who's our champion? Uh, Jonathan, yeah. wasn't it? Was it? Uh, I think it was me. Wow. Seems unlikely, but okay. Do, do you have your uh, your thing? The email? Yeah. Yeah, he wrote a book. It look, it's 14 pages long. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. You want to write an email, keep it to a paragraph, and I, I can put it on the air. And it, you know what? It was a good email. It's too long. So he's got, he's got time for next week to take that, edit it, and send it back. Yeah, keep it to so a paragraph. You're saying TLDR? Don't know what that means. 2L. Long DR. Dominican Dick. Republic. Dick. <laughs> Didn't read? Two. No, I read it. <laughs> It was a good email. I you think read I responded. the whole thing? Yeah. All right. And it would have won. I don't know if it would have won, but... Well, it wasn't hard to beat that group anyway. Mr. Jonathan, 1,400 Cubans exiled land in Bay of Pigs in a doomed attempt to overthrow Fidel Castro today. What year? 19... Raul uh, Castro stepped down yesterday. You saw that. 58... Yeah. So 1958, says Mr. Jonathan. 62. 62. I also had 62. 62. It was 61, so you guys are over. Oh. So Mr. Jonathan gets the point. He's such a douche. Yeah. Everybody thinks that. <laughs> you mentioned Game of Thrones, Barry. Game of Thrones, based on fantasy novel by George R. R. Martin, premieres on HBO today. 2011. 2011. What is it? Game of Thrones premieres Game of Thrones. today. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was 2010. 10? I think it was 2001. 2001. Somebody has two points. Barry Stein. Barry's really good. Got lucky. Barry Stein. Game of Thrones. I've never seen it. Neither have I. Okay. It was dumb. Last question. We have Barry at two points. Mr. Jonathan at one. One question left. I got two tiebreakers if it needs it. All right. Died today. Benjamin Franklin. Oh, come on. U.S. founding father Benjamin Franklin worked his way up from working class to a prominent as a writer and publisher of a newspaper before becoming the voice of America's interest in Europe. He died today at the age of 84. What year was that? 1794. Mr. Jonathan? 1701. 1701. I have 1793. 93. 93, 94 is over. 1790, so Mr. Jonathan gets another point. We got a tie. Barry and Mr. Jonathan are tied right now. So I could tie it up with a two point on the tiebreaker. And Thank then we you have for a tiebreaker after. See how flash. this thing goes through? You figured it all I out. I did. So it's back to Mr. Jonathan. Champion of England's Tom Sawyer and American John Heenan's fight out of brutal. Champion of England, Tom Sawyer. In American and John Heenan fight out a brutal two hour and 27 minute draw, 42 rounds in England. The police stopped the fight and acknowledge as the first world title bout huh. today. What year? First world title bout, 42 rounds, two hours and 27 minutes. 1801. 1801. 1887. 87. 1824. For the point, oh. Ed Sullivan, 1860. You get the point, though. Ed Sullivan is now one. Still got a tie here. Two to two to one. Last so question. I could still win. Three-way tie. 
three-way tie. It's over to Barry. The third Boston Marathon was won by Lawrence Brignonia in two hours and 54 minutes and 38 seconds today. The third ba Boston Marathon. The third Boston Marathon. 1920. 1920. I would say 1902. 1902. 1899. I'm only saying it because I already had it written down. Somebody has two points. Mr. Jonathan. 1899. He wins. He wins four to two to one. Wow. And then he wonders why nobody likes nobody him. Nobody likes I don't wonder at all. Oh, I know right. exactly why nobody <laughs> likes me. I'm okay with it. Yeah? I think you should change. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. So, uh, yeah, the after show should be interesting uh, because we'll get Barry's comments and, and feelings. of. But uh, is he, he's allowed to say whatever he wants? Don't or? take the gag off. <laughs> yeah. we, don't, we don't need that kind of bullshit. Yeah, I don't want to have to edit it. It won't yeah. be that bad. It's and just for the, the record, theory. For the record, he you like theory. me. You like me. I like you. So you well, like do you. I, I like me. You like me. That's why, it. why do we need to change? How's the ex-wife? She like you? Uh, not so much? No comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> not, not so much? Now don't you two see that you're in love with each other? All right. That's it for the show. Next <laughs> week, Terrence Riley from Aganosa Leaf is making his comeback of traveling. He's going to be with us for a few days. And he's going to teach Dave how to pronounce the name. Mm -hmm. Aganorsa. Aganorsa. Yeah, you should have taken the long pause up front. You just yeah, jumped you open in. your mouth as wide as you can. What do it used to be? Fernandez? <laughs> the, the, Cas yeah. Casa, Casa Fernandez. Fernandez. Yeah. That was better for you. Yeah, and I worked on that for a while, and I got it. So I'll eventually get this. And All right, El Luente. And he's the one to change the name. I actually thought it was brilliant. It reinvented that company. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that and how to smoke a cigar in a car. And Ed Sullivan has a big part of this, as Jonathan does, too. I've done experiments. So I, so I think I don't have to work that my ass off. That led to the demise of my marriage. This. I think we got something going on here. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And uh, it's quite possible that you learned something this week. I doubt it. I doubt it. That makes you The Cigar Authority. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast.